Hello, Charlie Sink here. When I was about 10 years old, I started to have the need to solder. As there was no one around who could teach me, and the internet pretty much consisted of searching through a card index at the library, I had to figure it out for myself. I made all the usual mistakes. Too much heat. Too little heat. Wrong flux. Wrong solder. Over time, with a lot of cursing, I figured it out. So if you don't feel like brushing up on the things you may have heard from the plumber, stick around. And if you liked the video, please subscribe, leave a comment or question, and hit the thumbs up button. All those things really help me build the channel. So let's get soldering. Welcome to another edition of The Weevil Genius. So let's take a look at some basic principles that make for successful soldering. Clean, oxide-free metal, appropriate solder and flux for the job at hand, appropriate application of heat to get the solder flowing. So back to the first one. Clean is pretty self-explanatory, but what exactly is oxide-free metal? Just about every metal out there exists with an oxide coating on its surface. The brown color of this pipe is a layer of copper oxide. The oxidation happens because we live in an atmosphere that contains oxygen, and the metal we are trying to solder has a surface that likes to bind oxygen atoms. This layer acts like a barrier to whatever two metals you are trying to join, either by soldering or even welding. So for soldering, the oxide layer must be removed so the solder and metal can come into direct contact. And something must be added so when the metal is heated, no oxidation forms. Here's an example. This is a bit of multi-stranded wire, nice and shiny. This will solder great. Here's some copper pipe. It's dirty and is heavily oxidized. It will need to be sanded to get down to the clean metal, so it looks like this. This is a strip of brass. It will solder great with the correct solder and flux and the correct heat applied. This is some heavily oxidized brass rod. It will not solder without first being cleaned up like the copper pipe. So what's an appropriate solder and flux? This is your typical 60-40 rosin core solder. It contains 60% lead and 40% tin and turns liquid at about 370 degrees Fahrenheit. The rosin core works as a shield to prevent oxidation while soldering. This solder is designed for use in electronics, mainly soldering wires. I use it on circuit boards and pretty much anything electronics related. I also use this type of resin flux to help flow the solder when the rosin core in the solder is just not enough. As solders go, it's not very strong and it contains lead. Here is some lead-free solder. This is often used to solder copper pipe used for plumbing in buildings. The lead-free part is important as the lead and leaded solder will slowly leach into the water flowing through the pipes. This solder is also stronger and has a higher melting point than leaded solder, about 422 degrees Fahrenheit. One drawback to lead-free solder is that the correct flux contains acid to help strip the metal of oxidation at the higher soldering temperature. This works fine, but it must be cleaned off after soldering, or corrosion from the acid will result over time. Never do this. Solder wires with acid flux. It makes a nice solder joint all right, but the flux is now leached into the wire, and over time the wire will corrode invisibly from within inside the insulation. And finally, how do you choose what amount of heat to apply to get the solder flowing? This takes some practice and experience. So let's get soldering and see how all this comes together. A little uh, ESC speed control for a model airplane I had. And this is just out of one of my junk boxes. I'll use it in a future project. It got taken out of some other project long ago and got the plugs cut off of it. So I need to solder on a little wire extension and put a plug on there. So the first step is getting some insulation off the wire. I do that with some little wire strippers. Now that we have both stripped, I always like to wind up the, the braids of the wire a little bit so they don't just flail around and stick out when you go to solder it. This seems to help a lot. So for soldering these wires, I'm gonna use 16 inch diameter uh, rosin core solder. It's the 60-40 blend. It's probably the most common type of solder for soldering electrical connections. So for this project, I'm gonna use a little Weller handheld 30 uh, watt soldering iron. Nothing special, I think this costs about 15 bucks at the hardware store. The soldering iron is hot, and looking at the tip, you can see that it's not bright and shiny. Uh, that's because the little bit of solder that's on there is oxidized. So to make good solder joints and be able to solder easily, we first need to clean the tip and then tin it. So I do that in one of these little uh, steel wool things, or brass wool things, and you can see it's already much more shiny. I got the oxidation layer off of the solder, and then we tin it a little bit with a little bit more solder. And I got some rosin core on there, and I'll shake it out to get the blob off the end. So it's ready to go. So the first step is to tin the wire. And we do that with just a little bit of solder. So I have my other piece of wire pre-tinned, 
but I want to put a little bit of solder on the soldering iron so that when I bring in the other piece, I have a little bit of extra solder to solder the two wires together. And there we go. So that's a good solder joint. You can see that the solder is fully connected both pieces of wire. It's shiny, it's not oxidized. And I could have had my wires a little bit more parallel, but this will be fine. So now I've got both wires soldered. The black turned out pretty nice as well. That's a good, strong solder joint. Now these two wires are gonna be plugged into a LiPo battery. So having two exposed wires touching each other is extremely dangerous and will eventually cause the LiPo battery to explode and uh, cause a fire and possibly burn down my house. So I wanna insulate these wires in a professional manner. So we'll insulate the wire with heat shrink tubing. I have a whole selection of this stuff ranging from a uh, diameter smaller than this all the way up to about half an inch. It's great for insulation. Cut off about a half inch of each piece and thread it down the wire and over the solder joint. At this stage, you can use a soldering iron to shrink the heat shrink onto the wire, but a much better solution is to use a heat gun. So there we have it, two insulated wires, ready for a plug and connection to a LiPo battery. So here's some 24 gauge wire, it's pretty small. And again, the first thing we do is wind up the uh, strands so that they hold together. So for soldering small diameter wire, I use small diameter solder. This way I don't end up with a giant blob of solder on the wires I'm trying to solder together. Pre-tin the wire. Over the years I've developed the skill of being able to hold two pieces of wire in one hand and solder with the other. I consider it my superpower. That's a good solder joint. So here's some 10 gauge stranded wire. My little 30 watt soldering iron really wouldn't put out enough heat to make a good solder joint. So I've got to move up to the next size tool. So as before, I'm pre-tinning the soldering iron, putting a little bit of solder on there. I'm not using that solder to try to fill up and tin the wire. I'll add more solder to the wire and let it flow in. That way it gets solder and resin core all the way through every strand in the wire, and that'll make a, a strong solder joint. Okay, let's do some PC board soldering. This is a through hole device. It's called that because, well, the pins go through the holes. Now these devices, I like to bend over the corner pins, just two of them, so it doesn't fall out while I'm soldering. And it's before I clean the tip of the soldering iron and tin it with a little bit of solder. And shake it. And there it is, just the right amount of solder. The solder is nice and shiny, so I know I don't have any cold solder joints. And how about some surface mount? First, I like to spread a little bit of rosin flux on the board where the part's gonna go. It really helps the solder to wet out and not form cold solder joints. A really handy tool to have is the desoldering station. This blows super hot air through this tube and out the handpiece, and you can remove parts from the circuit board um, without damaging the circuit board of the parts. So this is another tool I can't live without. It's an Ameriscope binocular microscope. I use it for soldering surface mount parts like this. So enough electronics, let's solder some metal. Many times in my prototyping business, I often need to solder together small metal parts. This is a stainless steel rod with a brass pinion. I need to solder it together. So for little parts like this, I like to use lead-free solder. It's the same stuff I showed before, only smaller, 16th diameter. And the stuff in the tube is a, a liquid flux, which flows into the metal parts quite easily. 
So for this kind of job, I like using a blowtorch that's adjustable so I can fine tune the flame so I'm not overheating the part. Apply some flux to the rod where the gear is gonna go on. So for this little project, I've got the blowtorch turned down as low as it'll go. I don't wanna overheat the brass or the rod. So we're gonna just gently heat it until the flux starts to boil and then uh, apply the solder. So I can tell this is a good solder joint. You can see it's all the way around the metal rod and it's gone all the way through to the other end. You can see just a little bit of ring of solder there. So that's a good strong solder joint. Thanks for watching. Hope you liked the video. See you next time.